name is Lori Kay, and welcome to the Monsters Made With Love channel. Today we'll be learning how to create your own Monsters Made With Love, like my girl Greta here. We'll be using the Monsters Made With Love, Create Your Monster Kit, and Share a Spare, or you can also learn along with our mini kit. Both kits are available at the sources below. Most everything you need is included in the kits, including fleece and fluff, floss, eyes, needles, pins, and instructions. The only things that you'll need to supply are scissors, writing utensil, creativity, and a whole lot of love. So let's get learning. Within both kits, they include detailed instructions, but I'm doing videos to help you learn along. With the larger kit, you also have the option of creating a monster for someone else, but it is very important that you create one for yourself first. Step number one is list five things that you love about yourself. This is important because this monster is for you. Sometimes it's difficult to find the five things that you love about yourself. I can laugh at myself, I'm loyal, I'm a good cook, I can easily make others smile, and I'm lovable. Step two is to draw a picture or a pattern of what you want your monster to look like. It can be very basic or can be very detailed. Just make sure it's about you. There's a place provided in the book for you to draw your pattern. And also on the last page of the book, there are a few ideas. Not feeling very creative? Need a little help? Go ahead, use one of mine. You can always cut this one out also and use it as your pattern. I'm gonna be drawing one that's a little bit kind of a big legged, little armed, couple eyes, no rope form, has a heart and a tag. I'm gonna add some leaves for a hat, maybe some wings. I'm feeling pretty inspired by the forest kit. We have some pretty browns and greens, and I'm going to create a monster that looks more like a tree. Make sure that when you create your monster, it has some individual flair to it, like maybe an exaggerated body part, something that looks like your favorite shirt, or an animal, or something that you do for a hobby or career. So after I've written the five things that I love about myself, and I've created a kind of a fun little tree monster, I'm going to cut out my pattern. So after I've cut the outline of my monster, and I've actually separated the arms, because I'll make those separate, now it's time to choose your fabric. In your kit, you actually have two larger pieces of fabric that are folded in half, so that you have two pieces together. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this onto here with your pins. You're going to go through both pieces of fabric and the paper pattern and now you can cut out the fabric. I like to leave a little extra fabric on the outside, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, because then when you sew it, you have a little more room to sew it. So now it's time to cut out the arms. I've used the same color as the body, but you don't have to. Take whatever color you like, fold it in half, and pin on the arm patterns. So you have a little extra room from where the arms are going to meet the body. And also I'm cutting a little extra on the outside of the arm so I can sew. Now cut out the second arm the same way, a little extra room on the outside. And you can see how it looks on your monster. Now it's time to decorate the face. I use the picture I drew as a pattern for the facial features. Right now, these are the teeth, little spiky teeth. You can kind of cut out all the little details and then attach it to the fleece with a pin and cut it out. Another option, instead of using the pattern, is you can kind of freestyle it. So with that, I would kind of get an idea of the size I would use for the mouth and cut it out of the fleece. Little spiky teeth, there you go. I'm also going to make a heart. All of my monsters have hearts. So with this, I take a piece of fabric, fold it in half, and just cut out a piece of a heart. 
Now it's time to design the eyes. I feel that's the most expressive part of the monster. You have five eyeballs included in the kit. Figure out which colors you like best. I like to mix that up a little bit. Then I cut a half circle as an eyelid. Make sure it fits. And then I also like to include an eyeball. The eyeball is a larger piece in the back as the background. And then I cut a smaller hole inside the monster as the hole of the eyeball. Fold the fabric in half and cut a half circle. And then place everything together. Make sure it all fits. Make sure you like the colors, the arms. There you go. Take all your pieces and pin them on the monster to make sure everything is all set in place. So they don't move around and you know exactly where they're going to be. Next what we do is we can pick our floss, our embroidery floss. In the larger kits, you have regular embroidery floss. They have six strands in each uh, color. In the smaller kits, we have a different type of a crochet floss that you don't have to divide. So it's just one strand and you just thread the needle and just start sewing. It gives a nice aggressive stitch. So here, I'm going to decide to use the green thread to sew some of my accents on the face. So I take off as much as I'd like to use and it's going to be about that long, okay? Cut it. You kind of just pull. It helps if you have a buddy. You just pull your finger and it's going to unravel a little bit. So I have two strings of three strands of floss each. This one I'd still like because it's the face. I would like to have a nice aggressive stitch. So I'm going to double thread it and tie it out at the end. So that will essentially give us six strands per stitch. I usually like to start with the eye, and I'm going to go with the eyeball first. So start from the back, and go through the center of the eyeball, and then make sure when you go through, you're going through both pieces of fabric, the backing and the front. I like to do a nice little dash stitch through the whole thing. Here's back and forth. After you've sewn on the eyes, move down to the mouth and sew that on. Put any other details you'd like on the face and don't forget to sew on that heart. If you make a mistake, that's all right. Turn it into something different. You'll love your monster with all of its faults and flaws. Always remember, there is no real perfect. Now let's put the eyeballs in. Use very sharp scissors to snip a tiny hole where you'd like to have the eyes. Don't poke a hole with the tip of the scissors because you might hurt yourself. Take the stem of the eyeball and put it through the hole. Affix the backing onto the back of each eyeball. Make sure it's nice and secure. You may need a little help with this. This monster I'd like to have a tail. So put both sides together, the front and back and make sure that they are the outsides of the monster and they match up real well. Next I'm just going to cut out a scrap of fabric and make a cute little tail and sew it on. Our monster is coming together quite well, isn't it? I like to put a tag in my monsters, so I cut a piece of fleece that is about a half an inch wide and four and a half inches long. You can put anything on your tag. I usually have an X and an O, and that's a symbol for my monsters. Use your initials or any type of sign you like. Since my arms are detached, I'm going to sew those next. You can use a whip stitch, and you can sew the outside and have more aggressive stitch, or you can sew inside out and turn it right side out.
Now turn both arms right side out so you just see a little bit of the stitching. If I'm sewing my monster inside out, I like to fill the arms with a little bit of fluff first. Now it's time to assemble your monster. Lay it out like you would if you want to see the face. Put the tag where you'd want it, the arms where you want it, and any other details. I like to switch the arms around to see how it looks. Now take the arms and the tag and flip them in and the tag in. Stick out the tag a little bit so you have room to sew. Then take the back and stick it on its face. So you're going to have the face to butt and line it up. I use pins to pin all the way around. You have four that are provided in the kit. Tuck in everything, have the arm stick out just a little bit and the tag stick out a little bit so you don't lose it when you're sewing. Leave the top open. Don't sew that part. Leave that one open so you can turn it right side out and fill it with stuffing. Just like with the arms, use a whip stitch all the way around until you get to the arms and tag, and then we do something else. Now when you get to the arms and the tag, you're going to do a running stitch back and forth. Don't go all the way around, don't wrap it. You're just going to go back and forth and make sure you hit all four layers. Two from the body and two from the arm. When you're sewing, think happy, loving, and grateful thoughts when you're creating your monster. No angry sewing. If you need help, you can always refer back to the five things that you love about yourself in step number one. After you've sewn most of the outsides, use the hole to turn it right side out. Push out its legs, its arms, any other appendages that you have in there. Now we got to stuff from the whole way. So remember, we have our bat in here. Pull it apart. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Pull it. Little bits of it, little bits of it, and shove it inside. Shove it all the way down. If you want, you can use a pencil or a chopstick or something like that to get it all the way into the feet. stuffed. Now you can take your needle and thread and sew up here. And sew his head together. Okay? So start with your knot in the inside. And make sure it's all in there. And then close up with another whip stitch all the way around.
This is one of my nice little tricks here. You tie a knot, you, know, you loop it through and you go through. Then what you can do is put it all the way in the monster, come out somewhere else, pull it really tight, cut it, and then the knot, the end goes away. All right, now I wanna add just a few leaves on top just to give it a little character. These are leaves that I just cut by hand, kind of freestyle, no real pattern needed, and just kind of put them in all the way around its head. So look at him, he's almost complete. Yeah, sure, I could add more leaves, add some fairy wings, put some little piggies on them. But I think I'm gonna stop right now and do the last step in making the monsters made with love. You have to give it a hug and a kiss. And now it's truly mine. The kit does come with enough supplies to make one for somebody else, and it also includes a letter where you can list the three reasons why the person is getting the monster. Please post your pictures of your monsters on Facebook and Instagram. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Please watch more videos on the Monsters Made With Love channel. I'll be showing you some basic sewing skills like tying a knot and threading a needle. I'll also show you more advanced sewing techniques like creating beautiful flowers and make the perfect booty. Isn't that cute? Anyways, stay tuned, take care, enjoy sewing, and have fun. Lots of love.